Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and today I wanna to show you Sunloo's latest filament dryer. This is the Sunloo Filler Dryer E2, and it's not on sale yet, but it will be soon. So they sent this model over to me in advance so that I could show you and go over all the features and things like that so you can know what you're getting yourself into. So the dryer that I have here is not considered to be a prototype. It's pretty much gonna be the same one that you guys are gonna be able to purchase, except Sunloo has looked at a couple of things that they need to change with the software and one of the mechanical bits in it, more specifically the roller mechanism. They're going to reinforce that to make sure that it's nice and solid. But for the most part, everything is going to be the same. Let's go over some pricing information and availability. Now they've got a few different prices here. So I just want to make sure that I get all of these correct. The pre-sales for this is going to start on January 8th. 2025 ringing in the new year with the filament dryer and for the first 300 units is going to be priced at $279.99 and then for the 301st to 1300 units after that it's going to be $289 and then after 1300 units have been sold the price is going to be $299 so basically going up in increments of 10 for hitting those milestones and then the regular price after the pre-sale is going to be $300 $149. So that's the pricing and release information for this. This is a high temperature filament dryer, which is going to be ideal if you plan on printing with some engineering quality materials, such as polycarbonate or nylon. But you can also print all other kinds of filaments in here too. You know, your PLAs, your TPUs, PETGs, ABS, all that good stuff. You can still do it in here as well. The minimum temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, and it can go all the way up to 110 degrees Celsius. And then on top of that, there's two different modes. The first mode is going to be for your regular filament drying mode. And then there's also an annealing mode as well. And the annealing mode is meant for polycarbonate and nylon filaments. And the way that it works is that you get this annealing tray along with the dryer, it's got a decent weight to it. And then you put this down in the dryer, you change the mode on the touch screen on the front, and then you take your uh, print, whether it was printed from polycarbonate or if it was printed from nylon, you put it down in the tray in the center, you close it up, and then depending on what your object is made out of is going to change the temperature and the time that it's going to be annealing for. So according to the instructions here, if you're going to be annealing polycarbonate, it's going to do it at 90 degrees Celsius for two hours, or if you're doing nylon, the two choices are 80 degrees for six hours or 90 degrees at two hours. And then you'll be able to do that. And then when it's done, it'll shut itself off. So looking around the filament dryer, you'll see that there's a number of different places where you'll be able to put the included PTFE tubing through if you plan on printing from the box. So we got two ports on the side, there's four ports on the top, and then there's two more on the left side as well. And you just simply stick the tube in there, whichever one is gonna be more convenient for you, and you'll feed the filament through that to your printer so you can continue to have your filament nice and dry while you're printing with it. Could be ideal for you depending on the climate where you live and if the humidity where you are is just a bit high and you wanna make sure that that filament stays nice and dry when you're printing it. The power switch is located on the back and the entire thing is encased in this sort of smoky uh, plastic. So you can't really see too well on the inside when you're drying stuff. But then when you open up this lid, which is a pretty good uh, heavy duty lid, I do like this, listen. It's got a nice satisfying smack to it when you close it. And then the metal rollers on the bottom is just gonna help roll your filament as it's being printed. They are not powered, so it's not gonna do any automatic rolling. It's just manual. But since I've been using it, it has made sure that the filament kept its place and that everything rotated nice and smooth. Also in regards to these openings where you can put the PTFE tubing through, you also have these little plugs that you can just easily unplug it and plug it back in. So you will leave these open when you're drying your filament and then when you're done drying the filament just to make sure everything just stays inside, make sure that heat is contained, then you can close all of these up with the exception of the port that you might be planning to print through and then that'll help keep the filament dry as well. 
All right, so let's take a look at the UI. I'm gonna flip the switch in the back. And you see the touchscreen lights up. It is not a color touchscreen though, but here's a little power icon here. We'll just tap that to turn it on. And then you can immediately hear the fan kick on. So as you can hear, and I'm not gonna lie to you, this is not the quietest filament dryer that I have ever used. You can really hear that fan going. So if you wanna put this in a place that you prefer to be as quiet as possible, then you may need to reconsider where you put this filament dryer because it does emit a pretty decent fan noise. All right, so let's look at the UI here. You see that you've got some uh, good information here. So you got PV and SV down here, which I think is kind of confusing just from a, a user interface perspective. But basically what this means is PV is the temperature that's currently inside of the dryer box. And then SV is the temperature that it's trying to get up to. So I'm currently at 28 degrees Celsius on the inside and it's gonna try to get up to 80 degrees Celsius. And then you also see that you have the type of filament that you are gonna be drying. It's on PA right now, which is nylon. You've got the time remaining at the bottom. You have the relative humidity inside of the box here. It's at 23%. And then MO is the mode. And right now it's on the filament drying mode, but if I move it over to M2, then that's going to be the annealing mode. And here's how you control it. You got a set button right here that you can tap. And then whichever of these values you want to change is just going to start flashing. So right now it's on SV. If I want to lower the temperature, I just hit the down arrows and change it to what I want it to be. And if I want to move it up, just hit the up arrow. It does the opposite. If I hit the set button again, you see that it's selecting both of these and I can hit the arrow button to change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So if you're in the United States, you know, we're more familiar with Fahrenheit, but with 3D printing, Celsius is what we deal with all the time. So you can change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius and back again if you want. I hit the set button again and you see that the sun lube button is starting to light up right now. And this is pretty cool because there's a cool little lighting effect. So this is the first lighting effect. You got the green just sort of going from the center to the sides. Here you got sort of like a Knight Rider-esque green bar going across like that. And then you can just turn it off if you don't wanna be bothered with that. I'm gonna hit set again. This is gonna be for the filament type. So this is on PA for nylon. We got PC polycarbonate, we got ABS, and you can see the values are changing. We've got TPU, PETG, PLA, and then back to PA. Hit set again, and then this is where we control the timer in increments of an hour, however long you wanna dry it. You got the relative humidity right there that you can also change if you want. Go as high as 50 if you wanna keep the relative humidity in there to 50%, and then here is the annealing mode. Like I said, it's on mode one. You tap it, it goes to mode two. Tap it again, it goes back to mode one. And then it takes us right back to the temperature that we are trying to achieve. So I use this filament dryer in conjunction with my Flash Forge Adventurer 5M Pro, and I was printing directly from the dryer box. And one of the things that I printed, which I showed in a previous video, was this guitar stand made out of nylon carbon fiber. You can take a look at that video if you wanna see this guitar stand in action, but it works really, really well. And since it's made out of nylon with these uh, carbon fibers mixed in, the carbon fibers, they don't necessarily make everything stronger, just made it easier to print than just regular nylon. One of the things I really liked about printing from this dryer box is that it is nice and sturdy. Let me show you the bottom of it. It doesn't just have like little rubber feet. You see, it's got metal on the bottom. It's got these two metal stands at the bottom and it sits nice and firmly on the table. And when the printer is pulling the filament from the dry box, 
The box is staying nice and sturdy. I had it positioned just like this, right next to the printer. And as it's pulling, this wasn't starting to like slide like this or be pulled or anything like that. I have tried some filament dryers in the past where I would have to angle them in a very specific way because for some reason, it would just start to pull the entire uh, filament dryer as it was printing. And even in some cases, it started to uh, pull in the PTFE2 that I was using like some sort of weird suction effect and it just made it so that I had to keep my eye on what was happening. Uh, but with this, I didn't have to worry about that at all because everything just printed nicely from it. This stayed really, really steady and I didn't have to worry about that at all. So I really did appreciate that. Now, some other things that I dried in here and then I printed includes front part of a gladiator mask. And I printed this with some uh, Enslogic filament. I dried the Enslogic filament here. This was a PLA matte, and then I printed with it. And well, first the, the filament came out very nice and smooth. I mean, look at this finish. I haven't done anything with it, but I am gonna like sand this and try to like prep this for something, but it really did come out very, very good. And this is basically what the Enslogic filament looks like on the spool. It is plastic and it's compatible with the uh, AMS light because I printed this on the Bamboo Lab A1 and you're able to just to slot this onto the AMS light. You don't need like an adapter or anything like that. It just goes on really easy easily and it comes off really easily. So I do appreciate that. I like the black color as well. So I printed this on here as well and that came out great. And then I also tried some PETG filament because that one is more hygroscopic than PLA. So it's a good idea to make sure that that's nice and dry too when you print with it to try to avoid things like stringing and just some general print nastiness. And I printed this cool stand for my Oculus Quest 3S. And again, this was with that uh, Enslogic filament. It was PETG Pro. So if I just take the Oculus off of here, this is supposed to have a nice matte finish to it for this uh, black PETG Pro. And again, I think that it came out looking pretty good. Here's the top portion of it. You see all the way around, it looks really good. And I didn't have any issues with stringing or anything like that. It printed just fine. Uh, the very first try, very smooth first layer on this as well. A Little bit of dust on it, but other than that, it came out really, really good. And then another thing that I printed was a stand for my Spider-Man helmet back here which also came out good as far as, uh, well, it started out good, but near the end, uh, well, it failed near the end. It came off of the build plate, so you know it's not the filament's fault, but this is what I would consider to be a functional part. So this is the bottom part of the base, and it looks very nice, and then I just slot this part in, and then I can take my resin Spider-Man helmet and I can just put this down just like that. And it does what it's supposed to do, holding the helmet up, holding the head up as it should. So these filaments I've had a good experience with. And these all printed with different temperatures, of course. But if there's one criticism that I do have to give this filament dryer, it has to do with the instructions because the recommended drying temperatures and times that's listed inside of the manual don't match the preset times and temperatures that is actually on the filament dryer. So for example, under TPU, the instructions say that it should be between 45 and 50 degrees Celsius for four to five hours. But this one here is getting up to 55 degrees Celsius and it defaults to six hours. Now I do know that sometimes it depends on the manufacturer's recommendation for drying the filament, but I did expect for the operating instructions to match exactly what the filament dryer has. The temperatures and times aren't like super far off and I don't think you're gonna damage any filament if you just stick with the default, but that is something that I noticed, so it's something that I gotta call out. 
Another con about this filament dryer is that it is pretty loud. So if you're gonna have this, like I said in the beginning, in a space that you prefer to be nice and quiet, this is going to produce a fan noise that is sort of reminiscent of a 3D printer itself. Maybe not quite as loud as a 3D printer when it's really just burning away, but it is going to be noticeable. But at the end of the day, this whole thing is about drying your filament and annealing it if you need to. And that's what this thing does. You know, as far as the features go, it's got that nice touch screen. It's easy enough to understand, but you really just want it to dry out your filament. And it does that. It does that well. I printed things with it and they all came out looking pretty good. Got plenty of places to feed your filament from directly to your printer if that's something that you want to do. And if you do need to dry your filament up to a whopping 110 degrees Celsius, then this is going to do it for you. I think that it is built very nicely. This lid is very sturdy. It does not move when the filament is being pulled from the box. Those rollers do a good job of being loose enough to prevent this thing from being pulled, but at the same time, it's not like super duper tight to be obstructive in any way. So yeah, it, it does what it's supposed to do. And at this point, you just have to ask yourself if that price is something that you are willing to pay in order to get those type of features. But even though there are filament dryers out there that are cheaper than this, this one is something that could be more future-proof for you if you think that you're going to get into those engineering materials in the future and you need to print with those higher temperatures because since this one gets up that high to 110 degrees, you buy it and then you don't have to worry about having to upgrade to another filament dryer in order to accommodate those higher temperature filaments down the line. So that's also something that you should keep in mind. So that is it. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.